welcome back to another cornerstone connection lesson review i hope you're all feeling great and you're ready to join us as we go through this week's lesson lesson number six i am a follower but before we begin let us pray dear heavenly compassionate father thank you for watching over our slide and thank you for giving us an opportunity once again to shoot another lesson review in your most holy, precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. And the key text this week comes to us from Luke 5 verses 8 to 11 and it says, Simon Peter fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. And in the book Desire of Ages, page 249 and 250, it says, They were humble and unlearned men, those fishers of Galilee. But Christ, the light of the world, was abundantly able to qualify them for the position for which he had chosen them. He passed by the wise men of his time because they were so self-confident that they could not sympathize with suffering humanity and become co-laborers with the man of Nazareth. The Lord Jesus seeks the cooperation of those who will become unobstructed channels for the communication of his grace. The first thing to be learned by all who would become workers together with God is the lesson of self-distrust. They are prepared to have imparted to them the character of Christ. Let me give you a synopsis of this week's lesson. Peter and the other fishermen, his brother Andrew, and their friends and business partners, James and John, had put in a hard and unsuccessful night's fishing. When Jesus asked them, to let their nets down again. Peter was skeptical, but he was willing to take a chance on trusting Jesus. When Jesus' advice resulted in a huge catch of fish, Peter was convinced he'd experienced a miracle. Certain that Jesus was more than just another great teacher, Peter was overwhelmed with a sense of his own sinfulness and fell to his knees before Jesus. He asked Jesus to go away from him, feeling he wasn't worthy to be in the presence of someone who might be the Messiah. But Jesus' response was to ask Peter and the others to follow him. And they instantly did, leaving everything else behind. Jesus still calls people, including young people, to leave everything behind and to follow him. But what are we to leave behind? Our families, work and livelihood, as Jesus asked the fishermen to do? What does that call mean for young people who are still living with their parents, going to school, planning a future career? What does total commitment to Jesus look like in the 21st century? This week's lesson explores some of those questions. Yes, and let's now get into our lesson. Now, on a sunny morning near the Sea of Galilee, Jesus met up with a group of fishermen. He had met these men and talked to them before. They were interested in what he had to say, but none of them had made that complete commitment to him as yet. Now, seeing that they had fished all night without catching anything, he challenged them to try just one more time. Now when they found themselves with more fish than they could handle, Jesus quickly shifted gears. He invited them to do a new kind of fishing, going out into the world and saving people for his kingdom, going out fishing for men. But to do that, they'd have to leave everything behind that was familiar, even their fishing boats. Now, when we think of leaving everything behind to follow Jesus, it's typical to think of leaving behind a life of sin. The criminal leaves his life of crime, the drug addict leaves her addiction, 
people begin a new life when they follow Jesus being born again. But the fishermen in today's story and others such as the rich young ruler were not living particularly sinful lives. Even Matthew, the tax collector, he was just doing his job, although it was a job that many considered sinful and disreputable, he was still doing his job. Now, the fishermen were working for a living to support their families. The disciples who wanted to bury his father was taking care of family responsibilities and the rich young ruler was a good man who kept the commandments. Throughout the past 2,000 years, Christians have wrestled with what it means to really leave everything behind and follow Jesus. And for the early disciples, it was straightforward. Many of them, like Peter and his friends, made a complete break with their former lives and left homes, they left their families and their jobs to travel around Galilee with Jesus. Even after Jesus' return to heaven, they committed themselves full-time to missionary work. Total dedication in the early days of Christianity, it meant risking your life since persecution was often a reality, as it is still in many parts of the world today. And for many of the early protestant groups, following Jesus all the way once again meant risking punishment and even death. It also meant for some giving up their worldly possessions, living in communities with other believers and going to overseas missionary fields. But most of us don't make those kind of sacrifices, especially in the 21st century. For most of us, following Jesus means what it has meant to most Christians throughout history. Living a normal life with the same material comfort and goals as the rest of the society. Paying lip service to commitment to Jesus without allowing it to make any serious difference in our lives. Now, as we reflect on this week's lesson, let us challenge ourselves with these three questions. The first one, can a committed Christian ever live a normal life? The second question, in what ways does God call us to be out of step with society? And the third question, what does he want us to give up in order to follow him? I have two questions that I would love to ask. Keith, did Simon Peter and the other fishermen knew Jesus before this event? How might this have had an impact on their response to Jesus? In fact, Darren, Simon Peter was already a great admirer and follower of Jesus. His love for the boats, fishing, and the sea brought him out that previous night, but the plan of catching a good catch was all unsuccessful. Peter and the others were skilled fishermen, but after toiling the whole entire night, they caught nothing. Now, as Peter listened to the sermon of Jesus, he must have thought of his own prospects as he thought of John the Baptist who languished in a dungeon, the ill success of the mission to Judea and the malice of the priest and rabbis, and even his own profession had failed him as he watched his empty nets. His future looked dark with discouragement. But then he thought of Jesus and said, Master, at thy word I'll cast my net. If he had only met Jesus, it would have been very difficult to exercise that kind of faith in the midst of his own dilemma. And for final question, why do you think Jesus performed the miracle of the great catch of fish before asking the fishermen to follow him? Now, this miracle above any other he had witnessed was to him a manifestation of divine power. In Jesus, he saw one who held all nature under his control. The presence of divinity revealed his own unholiness, love for his master, shame for his own unbelief, gratitude for the condescension of Christ, 
above all the sense of his uncleanness in the presence of infinite purity overwhelmed him while his companions were securing the contents of the net you know securing the bag peter fell at the savior's feet exclaiming as we said in the key text depart from me for i am a sinful man O lord we have reached the end of this week's lesson review but before we leave i'd like to leave you with a thought Peter, Andrew, James, and John witnessed an amazing display of Jesus' power and also of his ability to take care of them. After seeing the incredible catch of fish, they knew he was something out of the ordinary. But they also knew that he had the ability to supply their needs. They could trust him. Maybe that's why they were so willing to leave everything behind just to follow him just to walk away from their nets and fishing boats and start a whole new life jesus still asks us to do the same he may not be asking you to leave home right now but he's asking you to lay aside your commitment to a life planned around their values and start a life that's centered around his values complete dedication to god service to him and to others. You will have to work out for yourself what that will mean in your life. Not all the disciples are called to the same kind of work or the same kind of life, but they were all called to a changed life, a life that was 100% committed to Jesus, and that's what he calls us to do. Amen, amen, Dan. I couldn't have said that any better. We're all called to be committed 100% to Jesus. Not 50-50 on the borderline, but 100% committed. Amen. Now let us pray to close off our lesson review. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for everything that you have done and will be doing in our lives. Please consider to bless and keep us and protect us, Lord. Please be with our viewers, Lord. Be with them as they go on their day-to-day -day routines. Guide them and protect them. Help them to understand the lessons that we do week after week. Guide us and protect us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us again. Please join us next week as we look at lesson number seven. Restored at church. Keep safe. Have a happy Sabbath. Bye. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and, and subscribe. And please hit the notification bell <laughs> so that you can be notified of our next video.